Nancy, thank you. The Biden administration and the CDC have faced pressure to lift mask restrictions for vaccinated Americans, and the new guidelines are not without a few challenges, including how businesses, as you heard Nancy just say, how businesses will identify who is fully vaccinated and who is not. Earlier today, I spoke with Dr. Cameron Webb. He's a White House senior COVID policy advisor. I talked to him about the timing of today's announcement and what the White House wants Americans to know tonight. Dr. Webb, thanks so much for joining us again tonight. Appreciate your time. Obviously, there are millions of folks uh, cheering this news tonight. It does feel like a huge, huge milestone and turning of the page on this pandemic. What made right now the right time to do this, to loosen this ubiquitous restriction? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. You know, I think the main thing is that this is the combination of a lot of evidence. Uh, the last few weeks, several new articles, uh, the science telling us that these vaccines are, yes, incredibly effective at preventing death and hospitalization, but also preventing infection. And so when you combine the really great efficacy of the vaccines with really some of the lowest numbers or case rates we've seen in the country uh, over the past year, it felt like the right moment to combine the science and the data to say, hey, we can loosen those restrictions for fully vaccinated individuals. And my emphasis there is this is individuals, if you've gotten Johnson & Johnson two weeks after your J&J shot, if you've gotten Pfizer or Moderna two weeks after your second shot, that's fully vaccinated individuals. The risk is, is low enough that we think you can take off those masks. Let me, let's walk through some of the, the uh, practicalities here, though. It doesn't apply in all instances, even if you are vaccinated. For, so if you're in a crowd in an enclosed space, even if you are fully vaccinated, they're still saying keep the mask on. Probably the best example is planes, as a lot of folks are anxious to travel, get out of the house. So there are still a few restrictions, even in the midst of today's good news. And so in those kind of crowded spaces, again, it's just a high risk environment altogether. And so we want to make sure people are protected. But when you're out, Outside or when you're moving around, when that risk is lower than in a setting like a plane where you're in a confined space uh, for a, a longer period of time, I think in those lower risk settings, I think people are safer. And I think that the evidence tells us that there's a lot of protection that those vaccines provide. And what about a restaurant, for example? Yeah, indoor dining is is now okay to do to be in a restaurant without a mask if you're fully vaccinated. Again, this is one of those reasons why a lot of people are excited. And you know, we're certainly not taking our eye off the ball. There's still a lot of work to go. You know, 58% of adults have had at least one shot. That means there's still 42% of adults who haven't. And there's a lot of folks for us to reach. We want everybody to be protected from the worst of what this virus has done. So, if people want to go out to restaurant X and they walk in without a mask. That restaurant, that movie theater, that that bar, whatever it is, doesn't know amongst the maskless who's been vaccinated or not. To, so to a certain extent, this will be a test of America's honor system going forward, pretty much, right? I think that in public spaces, remember, the people to whom that risk accrues at that restaurant, at that movie theater, it's the unvaccinated individuals. For the vaccinated folks, they're, they're protected by the vaccine that they received, uh, you know, at least two weeks ago. And so that's where I think that people need to make decisions in their own best interest. Wear a mask if you're not vaccinated or if you are vaccinated, you have a little bit more freedom. What does this mean for children under 12 who obviously are not eligible yet for the vaccine? How should parents interpret today's guidance in terms of how to make their kids ready to go out and go in into various places? Well, I think we want to take our time reintroducing kids. There are a lot of different dynamics with kids of different ages. I've got a six-year-old who's not ready to be around folks without a mask quite yet. So take take your time with it. But I think that the overall risk to kids is kind of dictated by the risk in communities. And so CDC will continue to update that guidance. And I know a lot of parents are looking forward, so we'll continue to keep them apprised. Dr. Webb, thanks so much for giving us a few minutes. We really do appreciate it. It is uh, certainly a big day. We're, we're starting to turn the page, and it feels like that today. So thanks for uh, giving us some time. Thanks for having me. We're not spiking the football yet, so we got to keep going, but it's good news. Understood. And glad you made that point. Thanks again.